What's up, guys? Joe at Momentum Works. Today, we're going to be talking about the plumbing and the changes you need to make to run an S400 or S500 on your Caterpillar engine. Stay tuned. So while we've covered in depth the strength of running an S400, an S410, or an S500 in multiple other videos, we're not going to talk about that today. What we are going to talk about are the plumbing changes you need to make as far as your oil feed line, your oil drain line, your air cleaner inlet, your exhaust outlet, the manifold footing, all those things where the turbo has touch points to the motor, we want to cover what you need to do as far as using that. So what we have here is an S400, an S410, and an S500. The S410 is a replacement for the GT47, which is what would have come stock on your single turbo Caterpillar. So this particular S410 SX has an upgraded 78 millimeter wheel, but the S410 SX frame size is gonna be a direct fit for all of your Caterpillar engines. Your oil feed line, your drain line, your air intake, your exhaust, all of that will be a direct fit. So this is always a good turbo to go with, but there are times where you might wanna go with an S400 or an S500. So we're gonna dive into the changes you need to make to make that change happen. So right off the bat, we're gonna talk about the S400 here. This is the smallest turbo in the lineup that we're gonna talk about today. And if we start right here at the front, we'll notice this has a smaller air cleaner inlet. So where the air cleaners come into the front of the turbo, this is a five inch. So if you're running this on a Caterpillar, you need to use a reducer. Your options are to use a reducer, basically which would go on to the front of the turbo here, and now would make it the correct size for your boot, or you could use a reduced boot. So this boot has five inch on one side and six inch on the other, so there'd be proper fitment for your air cleaner piping and the turbo. For the S500, it's gonna have the same air cleaner intake as your stock turbo, which is six inch on both sides. So if you're running the S500, you won't have to make any changes as far as your air cleaner piping goes. Now that we've covered the air cleaner inlets, let's move on to the compressor outlet going towards your charge air cooler. You'll notice right away that the Caterpillar style is very different from the S400 and the S500. The Caterpillar uses an elbow with double O-rings. Basically, you stick it in here. It's got O-rings that hold it in place and little tabs. If you want to switch to an S400 or an S500, you, you, need, to need, you, hoo -hoo, you need to use a V-band style elbow that bolts onto the compressor outlet like so. And this would have a V-band clamp and an O-ring inside to make it work. And then it would have the same four inch, uh, four inch discharge on the other end. So the S400 and the S500 are both gonna use the same V-band elbow, but that is different from the Caterpillar style. Are you ready for something that doesn't need a change? Well, that'll be your exhaust housings. Across the board, we're throwing you a bone, they're all T6. T6 divided, T6 divided, and while this particular S500 has a T6 open flow, it's also available in a T6 divided. So as far as all these turbos bolting to your manifold, that's all direct swap, no changes needed. It is important to note that some S400s are available in a T4 flange instead of a T6. So you wanna make sure that you're buying a regular T6 flange S400, which is most common on commercial trucks. All right, now let's talk about our oil feed location. S410, S500. Now across the board, the oil feed, so basically the distance between the two mounting holes and the hole itself are the same. So all the oil lines are interchangeable. Now what's different is the thread pitch of this hole. So your S400 bearing housings are gonna use an M8 bolt. Your S410 is gonna use a 3 8 bolt. And your S500 is gonna use a 3 8 bolt. And if you don't wanna use a two bolt oil line, in the center of every turbo, well, at least for Borgs, aftermarkets might be a little different, it's tapped for a quarter inch NPT fitting. So instead of using the two bolt oil line, you can screw a fitting in something like uh, this and use a hose like this. It'll screw right onto that NPT fitting. It's NPT on the turbo side. Um, and these, I mean, you could use whatever you want. These are a regular tapered line. On the drains, we're gonna run into that same issue where the S500 uses an M8 style bolt versus a 3 8 on the S410s and S500s. The next difference on the bearing housing is the width or the drop of the bearing housing itself. 
The S400 is 3.8 inches. Or it's a little less than that. I'm not a scientist. While the S410 is almost 4.5 and, and matches the S500 as well. Now, what makes that an issue, while your feed line will work, suddenly your drain line, the turbo is going to be sitting lower off of the manifold. So if you're using the factory drain line on your cat, something that looks like this stainless steel one, this line is now going to be too long because the bearing housing sits lower. So while it works directly with your S410 and your S500, you can use your stock line. Since this S400 is going to be sitting slightly higher, this will no longer made up to the bottom of your turbo. It'll be too short. So my recommendation, cut this, add a little bit of silicone hose to extend it. Then you'll be able to make it match up with your S400 bearing house. Ever since the first time I saw a girl in a pair of leggings, I was an ass man. So let's talk about the backside of these turbos and finish this video up. We've got our S400, an S410, and our S500. S400, S410, they use the same turbine wheel, so they use the same exhaust housings. So this flange here where it mounts to the downpipe is exactly the same for both of these turbos because they're the same housing. Boom, boom. Throw your V-band clamp on there, done. 575 Marmon, very common um, on cats, older Detroits, things like that. Now you'll notice there is a bit of a height difference because the S410 has a different bearing housing and has a different compressor cover. So as far as getting your downpipe to mate up to this, it's a direct fit. But as far as the actual length of your exhaust pipe, you might have to add in a little bit of flex to make it reach, but that's not too difficult. The problem comes in on the S500. This flange is completely different. This is a 5.16 inch flat face V-band. So you've got two options here. Your first option is to get a, you know, a little adapter like this from us. It's going to bolt up directly to your turbo. This is a direct fit. And then what you would do is you would take your existing downpipe, cut your flange off, put the pipe into this recess here, and weld it up. And this becomes your new downpipe plate, uh, flange to made up to this turbo. Now, if you're like me, you don't have a ton of time to weld shit up because you want to go home and see your family. You buy a trick adapter like this, which this side mates up to your 5.16 inch flat face V-band. And the other side is your 575 full Marmon, which now, as you'll notice, makes it identical to the S410 and S400, which is already on your truck. So now your stock downpipe mates up directly with an S500. All right, guys. So I hope this was insightful. Let's just run over it again real quick. You have to consider your air cleaner inlet, your compressor discharge, your oil feed and oil drain, and your exhaust pipe connection. There are things you all need to think about when you're switching from an S400 and S500 or S410. Now, why, and like I said, we've covered this in depth, why would you want to use any of these turbos over the other? The S410, 95% of CAT customers, this is what you want. This is a good upgrade. It's a similar frame size to what you have, and it's going to be direct bolt on. So that's what's going to do best for you. S500, GT55 stuff, that's for guys shooting for big power. So naturally, those guys know that they're going to need to change some connections to work with that turbo. So that leaves us the, the lowly S400, the, the backbone of the commercial market. Now, why the hell would you ever want to run that turbo? Well, it's dirt cheap. Right now, it's under a thousand bucks to get one of those turbos. Would I ever recommend it for a cat? No. But if you're short on money, you're going to be able to get one of these turbos cheaper than anything else. And if you're able to make all these different changes in plumbing, which are really easy, we offer kits for it, and you can probably go to a junkyard and do it yourself if you're scrappy, you'll be able to get back on the road for short money. Now, this turbo is not going to be as good because it does have a smaller bearing housing. It doesn't have a wide bearing spacing. It's not going to have 360 thrust bearing, of course, unless you buy an aftermarket one that's already been upgraded. Um, but this is a good turbo that would be comparable to a stock turbo, but non waste gated. So if you're really short on cash, you could run an S400 and make those changes and be back on the road for short money. Guys, I hope this video was insightful. We get a lot of questions about how to fit different turbochargers. So I figured I would just lay it all out there with the specs. If you want to put it together yourself, you can certainly do that. Or we left links in the description below that will give you a total install kit for putting any of these turbos onto your Caterpillar application. Guys, thanks for watching. We'll put out some more videos. If you want us to do a video on a certain topic, please leave it in the comments below or shoot us an email. They all went about the shift right there. Woo! Well, I'm going to cut the video there. Guys, thanks for watching. Cut!
my life into pieces. This is my last resort. Suffocation, big penis. <laughs>